Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on our 2017 GMC Terrain Denali. So the painting notes were here and got our terrain all painted up, so now comes the second best part of any rebuild, reassembly. The best part is always disassembly. So let's get that done and get this thing back out on the road. First thing we're going to do is throw the headlight back in. I always like to get these out of the way. I'm always afraid I'm going to scratch or break them when they're sitting in the car. So we'll get it in the car where it's somewhat safe. Plug it in, just set it in there. Tuck it in behind the bumper, and then bolt it in. Now, hopefully nothing will happen to it. We'll put the bracket in for the bumper, also holds the bottom of that headlight in. Bolt it in. And we'll push the bumper back into place. Clip it in under the headlight and use our bumper installation tool to clip it into the bracket on the side. Of course the back of it didn't want to cooperate. We'll bolt in the grill and our front end's all put back together. So now we'll put the bezel in around the filler neck. We'll open up our cap and lose another five dollars worth of gas fumes. I'm never going to financially recover from this. Put our cap back on so we stop losing our fumes. bolt in the filler neck. You have to unbolt it to move it around to get that bezel out of there. Slide the gas door back on and clip it in. Close it up. Now we'll put our bracket back on for the rear bumper. Two brackets actually. Line up the bumper with the brackets and use our bumper installation tool. Now we'll throw our taillight back in there. Plug it in. Line it up, there's a tab on the bottom. It's also a bumper bracket, and it slides into the two tabs on the quarter panel. Line everything up and push it in. Put our bolts in it, put our little caps on. Now we can bolt in the bumper and put the little cap on, and then put the bolt in the bottom. And now because I'm tired of reaching inside the door to open the doors, we're going to throw the handles on it right away. So we put the little gasket in, put the handle in, and then put the cap on. And we'll tighten up the cap. And we'll put our little plug over the hole. And now we don't have to reach inside anymore. We'll do the back door while we're here. Put the gasket on. Slide the handle in, slide it forward and latch it in, and put our cap on. Tighten up that rear cap to hold everything together, and put our little plug in. Now we can put the gasket in over the back door here. I left the little clips in because I like to break when you take them out, so I just have to stretch the gasket over the clips. The other ones are Christmas trees, so they just push in. And now we can put our molding back on the top of our doors. We'll slide it behind that other molding that I refused to take off because I didn't want to spend the money on those other three rivets. Get it slipped in there. And we'll slide this molding over the pinch weld Push it in there. And now we'll put our rivets in. We're going old school with the hand riveter. Of course, due to video editing, we can make it look like it's pneumatic. Put our little plastic rivet in there in the back. And clip our weather stripping in. Now we're going to pull the water barrier off. We're going to take it all the way off. I usually like to leave the bottom on, but we need to get into all this door. We have to change the wiring harness. Our wiring harness has a whole bunch of extra wires in it, so we're going to have to use the original. So we're just going to yank the old one out. I'm pretty careful when taking the old wiring harness out, because you don't want to damage anything before you throw it in the pile. 
And we took our wiring harness out of our original door. So we'll route that through. Feed the wires through. We ground it in there. And then just start plugging in our wiring harness all along the door. I did use the used airbag sensors instead of the originals just because they are reusable but if you have ones that have never been used in a deployment it's always better to use them i guess but they are reusable i have had plenty of customers verify that for me so my channel wouldn't be complete without a little cavity wax in this bottom seam to make sure that our doors don't get rusty plug in our speaker this is the original speaker the pioneer it's always different than the used one we'll slide our window track down in there turn it sideways and slide it in and we'll do the back we'll push it into the channel at the top Now we can bolt in our window track and put our water barrier back up there. These are actually pretty nice. They are reusable. They stick just as good the second time as they did the first. Line up the two tabs in the top and kind of just sticks right on. Not like the Toyotas with the gooey stuff that gets everywhere and never sticks again. So now that we got it all stuck in place, we will pull it back down a little bit. We'll route our door handle cable through here, and we'll drop our glass in. Hey, that glass is a lot cleaner than it was the last time. He said he wasn't going to clean it. He didn't. This is the glass out of the original door, so I'm throwing it back in there. It was cleaner. And since I don't clean things, I figured I'd use that one. Drop it down in the regulator. And we'll plug in our door panel so we can lift our window up. Now we can bolt the window into the regulator and put our water barrier back up there. We'll put our window sweep in there. And then we'll go on the outside. We'll put our belt molding in. Slide in underneath that top molding and then just clip it down. Put our little gasket in underneath the mirror and then we can put our mirror in. Start the bolts and run them in there and plug the mirror in. Now we can put our trim around the top of the window. There's a couple of tabs on that window molding that we installed earlier and it clips into that and then goes over the edge. It is easier to do with the window down, but I didn't feel like putting the door panel back in just to lower it down, so we'll struggle. So now that that molding's in, we can put our door panel back on. We'll reconnect our door handle and then plug in the wiring harness, set the door panel down on the clips, and smash it onto the door. A couple bolts in the grab handle and one in the door handle. Put our little caps in, and we're on to the back door. We'll pull the water barrier out of this one. One bolt the regulator. It's on our way to get the wiring harness out. So we have our new wiring harness. I'm gonna stuff it in here. Feed it through the door. There was actually only one plug that was different on this wiring harness. I probably could change the end of it, but I just changed the whole harness. And if you're wondering, the one plug that was different was for the rear speaker. Tighten up our airbag sensor. Pull our harness through. Put our cavity wax in the bottom of our door. At least one side of the car won't rust. 
and we can stick our regulator back in here. Bolt it in. Plug it in, plug in our speaker, and bolt that in. I do put the wax in there after I put the wiring harness in because otherwise that wax is wet and the wiring harness always ends up in it and you get the stuff everywhere makes a mess. So now we can put our molding back on the top. Clip it in there, smash it on. And we'll use the uh, hand-powered pneumatic riveter. Clip in the weather stripping in the back. We'll put in our little push pin in the front. And snap the gasket in. Now we can throw our quarter glass in. We already put the primer around it and I had to mask off the bottom of it because I spill a lot. And I don't want to mess up the fresh paint on the quarter. So now we'll put on the forbidden chocolate icing. On the back side, when we get up there, we'll go on the inside. That way if we don't have a tight seal, it'll only leak when the car is upside down. And at that point we have more problems than a window leak. We'll set the window up there. There's a couple of alignment tabs and I managed not to break two out of the three. So it kind of helps us align it. And it also clips the window in. So we'll push it into place. Make sure it's seated all the way around. We don't want any leaks. Now we'll put some masking tape on there just to hold it and until that urethane cures. Throw our gasket in the back. Just has a bunch of little Christmas trees in the back, so they just push in. Now we can put our glass in the back door. We'll drop the stationary glass in. We'll put our window channel in the front. Tuck it in in the top and drop our glass in. I also did not clean this one. The detailing gnome did. We'll slide the stationary glass back into place and bolt it in. Put our window up. Bolt in the regulator to the bottom of the window and tighten up our track. Make sure it works. Let's slide our belt molding in the back and then clip it down with our belt molding installation tool. Put the window sweep in. And we'll put the plastic around the top of the window. Clip it into that molding. Actually in the back it clips into the window. And then it clips into the molding on the top and in the front. Put our little push pin in the bottom of it. And we're ready to put our water barrier back up. So we'll feed the cable for the door handle through. Line up our two little dimples at the top. And push the water barrier on. Now we can reconnect our door handle. Slide the cable in. We'll run the wire through for the window switch. Route our door lock. Set the door panel into the tabs, the clips on the top, and then push it in. We'll use the bumper installation tool for that. 
run the two bolts in behind the door grab handle and the one behind the door handle. Put our little caps in. Then we got our little closeout panel for the front fender here. Got all our clips in. We'll stretch this gasket over the top of it. Now it's arts and crafts time. We're gonna glue our new wiring harness, actually the original wiring harness and antenna wires to our new headliner. We just tore the old ones off. Just a little hot glue gun. We'll stick them back on here. We did have to cut a hole for one extra speaker in the front. We just made a template out of the other one and cut the hole out, snapped the speaker in and it was done. Now we'll throw some cavity wax up in that top roof rail before we put the headliner back in while we're waiting for our glue to harden up. Make sure we get on both sides of that panel we welded in. We don't want anything rusting in there. So now we can throw the headliner back up there. Walk it in the back. Clip in the overhead console and then stick the magnets up. Plug in our antennas. Plug in our washer line in the back and plug in the front of the washer line. Clip it into its little clips. We'll put our grab handles in. Just push into the ceiling. Two bolts, close the little doors, and they fold up. Pretty simple. One more on the driver's side. I guess they don't feel the driver needs one. You can grab one on the steering wheel, I guess. Bolt in our sun visors and the sun visor clip. We'll put the little cover over the bolts. Plug in our camera and our rear view mirror. Slide the rear view mirror down there. Hey, free eye pass with the purchase of a terrain. Road trip. We'll put our bezel up over all the wiring and put the little door on. And we can put our little clothing hooks in the back Now we'll tuck the headliner underneath the hatch gasket. Line up this clothing hook and screw it in there. Pull our gasket over this side. And now we can bolt in the sun visor on the driver's side. We okay. decided to use the excessively long screwdriver for the sun visor clip for some reason. Probably just so the experts could tell me it was not required for the job. I can throw our quarter trim up there. Just push it up and clips in. There's a screw in the D pillar and one in the C pillar. Put our little caps back on. And we'll put our quarter trim up on the other side. I never actually took this out of the car because I could not get the seat belts to come out of the floor. GM uses an excessive amount of Loctite and then with a little bit of rust uh, they never come out again without heat and prayers. So I just don't even fight with them, leave them in there and work around the quarter trim unless it happens to be in my way for some reason. Now we can throw the carpeting back in. laid out there. Then we'll have the detailing gnome go ahead and vacuum it before we put anything in here just to keep the clean freaks happy. I'm certainly not going to clean it. I don't want anything to do with the C word. 
we'll run our wires through there. Push the carpeting over the ductwork underneath the console. Tuck it up under the pedals. We'll clip the wires into the floor on this side. And we can unbolt our seatbelt adjuster on the driver's side. And it's broken. They always are. Luckily, Scott's Terrain Emporium had a couple in stock. We'll bolt those in there. Make sure they work. I don't know what the warranty is from that guy. He's a little shady. Bolt the one in on the passenger side. And we can throw our console in. Lay it down for right now. Plug in our harness and our USBs. And then we'll route our shift cable. And slide the console forward up into the dash. We'll bolt it up to the dash first. We'll clip our shift cable in. Run our bolts in for the console. Make sure to tighten up the ones that pull it forward first. So it's nice and tight up against the dash. Then we put our side cover in. Just snap it in there. Use your bumper installation tool to clip it all in. And there's one little plastic rivet up in the front. Snap that in there. Bump your head in the steering wheel as you climb out, and you know you're done. Now we can bolt in the passenger side. We'll put our little triangle filler pieces in up here. Push them into the dash. Use the bumper installation tool to clip them all the way in. And we'll put our side cover on this side of the console. We can run our wires down our A-pillar on the passenger side, reconnect the antennas, and we'll put our lower quarter trim in on the passenger side. Slide it in behind the seatbelt. Get it all lined up. And smash it on there. Tuck the gasket in. Sure it's all clipped in there and we'll do the driver's side this side's pretty much the same except we have an extra plug for the 12 volt outlet plug that in line it up and push it in now we can bolt in our cargo hooks hold that trim panel in and we'll put the little caps on. To the driver's side. We'll put in the sill plate for the hatch. And the spare tire cover. Now we can put in our extremely heavy rear seat. Had to get a known to help for this. He was just out roaming, so. We'll set our seat in there. And we can bolt the front of it in. Slide the seat forward. Then we get to our rear bolts. Tighten those up. It's manufacturer specs. Then we can put the closeout panel in here. Just has two tabs that slide in the back of the seat. Clips down in it. We can bolt our wiring harness into the floor for the seat. 
and then we'll put our rear bolts in our center console. Close the little doors. And we're going to do all that again on the driver's side. Let me put the roof rail in that we took off earlier so we could paint it. And take that side panel off. Just slide it over the studs and bolt it down. The front just clips in to the other studs that don't have any threads on them. We'll line up our little satin trim piece up here, clip it down into place. Bumper installation tool is getting a workout today. Now we can put our A pillar trim on, plug in our speaker, slide the tabs into the dash. And we'll clip in the little bracket that holds it from flying across the car when the airbags deploy. And clip it into the pillar. And pull our gasket out that's tucked behind it. And we're going to do the same thing on the passenger side. Clip in our speaker. Clip it into the dash. Put on the A-pillar leash and clip the trim in. Now we can put the molding on the bottom of our fender. Just clips in. And since this is not a sponsor video, we're going to remove Methaney's name from the back of our terrain. Some dealers get a little excessive with putting their name on their vehicles. These guys are excessive. We'll pull the other name off the back of it. It also had a license plate frame on the back. So I guess we needed three different signs on the back of the car. Put our wheel liner in. I got to it before the gnome did. So we set it up there, put all our push pins in, a couple bolts, a couple more push pins, and our wheel liner is installed. Do the same thing on the back. Put our push pins in, then our bumper, a couple more push pins, we're done. Now we're gonna unpack all of our seat belts from my airbags. We're all rebuilt. It's like somebody's back from his vacation. Must be payday. But before we can install them, we need to put our foam back in the bottom of this pillar that we took out. So I put a little hose on the end of it so that I could reach down in there because the gun really doesn't fit all that well. It expands pretty fast. I think you got about 10 minutes to until it fully cures. It starts expanding as soon as it hits the air. So that's why there's paper there, because if you spill it or get it on the carpeting, it's not easy to clean up. It actually doesn't clean up, so. I just put the paper down, get myself a little placemat. While we wait for that to fully cure, we'll go through the driver's side in, plug the seatbelt in, bolt the bottom of it in. Pull our little plastic clips out of there. We'll route the seatbelt up the pillar. And there's one little metal clamp in the middle. With a push pin that holds it in. And we'll connect our seatbelt to our adjuster. Tighten that up. Manufacture specs. And now we can put our B-pillar trim on. Route the seatbelt through there. We'll line up the adjuster on the back side. And clip it in. Put our screw in the top. Now we put the lower trim on. 
slide it underneath the sill plate in the back. Then just push it into the pillar, pull our gasket out. And now we can put our sill plate in the front. We'll plug in the light. Clip in the clips in the front. And push our sill plate down in the floor. Pull the gasket out. It is inevitably stuck in there. Now we can put our tensioner in our seat. Plug it in. Push the safety in. Line it up. Bolt it down. And we put the cover on. Uh, we'll use a bumper installation tool for that as well. Now we're ready for seat operation. Trying to get it in without touching the door or the door panel because it will scratch both. So we got it in there, kinda, sorta, not really. Get the tabs in the front lined up, tip it forward, and set it back. Then we can plug in our wiring harness and bolt the back of it down. Slide our headrest in there, make sure it stays. And while we're here, we'll put that little cap in the B pillar that I bet you thought I forgot. I did. So now we can put our seatbelt in our passenger side since all of our foam is dry in there. Bolt that in there. Then we'll route the seatbelt up the B pillar. A lot of people do complain about the foam because it causes rust. This is actually a different kind of foam. It doesn't really hold water quite like the foam that goes in quarter panels. It notoriously rots them out. I'm looking at you, Yukons, Tahoes, Escalades, any Dodge product. Horses, escapes, so no manufacturer is immune to the foam. And we can reconnect our seatbelt to our tensioner, clips in. I'll run the screw in there to hold the cap and the seatbelt together. Plug it in, make sure it works and it's not twisted or anything. And we'll go back to the passenger side. We'll put the B pillar trim on the top. up there and bolt it in. I put the trim on the bottom. This doesn't take as long as everyone thinks it does. It seems like a lot of work but it's not. It's actually meant to go together fairly quickly. Put our sill plate back in in the front, plug it in and snap it down. And we'll cavity wax this bottom part. We'll use the holes in the bottom of the rocker here and the holes for the weather stripping. Make sure we get on all sides of the panels that are in there. Get a good coating around everything that we welded and basically any metal in there. It never hurts to have a little extra wax. So this side won't rust. No guarantees on the other side. Back to our game of operation. We made it. No scratches in the paint, no damage to the door panel, and nobody's nose lit up. We'll bolt in our seat. Reconnect our seatbelt to our tensioner. Buckle it, make sure it's working like it's supposed to. And then we can throw our headrest in here. The moment of truth. Is the airbag light gonna go off or 
or the airbag is going to go off. The light's over here somewhere. There it is. Well, no poof. Lights out. We're good. So we need to put our gasket back in the bottom, but a bunch of the clips were broken. So in order to put them in, you just kind of slide them out one side. And then when the tab pops out, you just pull them out of there. To put them in, it's the reverse. They're kind of T-shaped. You don't want to get too aggressive with it or you will tear the rubber. So you pull it just enough to get the end of the T out of there. Now we're going to put the molding on the bottom of a rocker. Not sure what this does, as far as I can tell, not a thing, but it was there before, so I'm putting it back. Just clips in. While it's up in the air, we'll change the oil. Since the oil plug came out, I can assume it was not done at Jiffy Lube. Once the oil's drained, we'll put our oil plug back in. And we'll go get our six foot breaker bar and tighten it up and send it to Jiffy Lube. I'm gonna throw our gasket back in. Just snaps in. And we can change our oil filter. These used to be conveniently located and until they put a high pressure fuel pump right above it. You used to be able to put a socket on there and a long extension and get right to it. Now you gotta put a tiny little ratchet in there. Work underneath the high pressure fuel pump. Put our new oil filter in there, screw it in. It's actually not difficult to change, it's just not as easy as it used to be. It was pretty easy before. Throw our oil bag in here. Put our cap back on. Click. And we'll throw the dipstick back in. Now we need to change the battery because the other one was a little bit weak. So we just pull the filler panel up, unbolt the ECM, slides out of the tab, set that up on the engine for now, unbolt the battery bracket, we're going to unbolt the positive cable. The negative side I just left loose. And now we can lift the battery out of here. Drop our new battery in. Tighten up the positive cable. We did take the little plastic caps off the battery. I shouldn't have to say that, but Believe it or not, people try to put the battery terminals on with the plastic caps on there and can't understand why the battery's dead. Throw a little grease on the terminals, keep them from corroding. Put our bracket back on here, tighten it down, and we'll slide our PCM back on. Slides into the tab, one bolt in the back. And put our close-up panel back in. All of its push pins. I get a lot of the experts in the comments telling me that I should repaint cars when the clear coat is peeling like this. It's pretty bad. But what they don't realize is that one of the benefits of living in Chicago is the Michigan water. It fixes that right up. Let me show you. Just like that, no repaint necessary. I'll be bottling up our Lake Michigan water to sell if you need to repair your clear coat in case you live somewhere, you know, down south. But in actuality, that is a product that's called Spray Mask. 
and it keeps the overspray from settling on the paint. It's just like soap. So when you wash it or get it wet, it just dissolves. It becomes soap, you wash the car and it washes away. Sometimes it's a little thick, you gotta go over it a couple times, but we actually put it on the cars a lot of times when they come in. That way if they're in the shop and you get any fallout, you just rinse it off. Uh, you never have to worry about overspray. You don't have to bag the whole car when you're painting the side or whatever. And that's where it all comes from. So it at least goes on the first time we start painting or priming. But yeah, that's all it is. It's not the clear coat. There's nothing wrong with the clear on this car. I will be selling this magical Lake Michigan clear coat restorer on my website. It'll be right next to the blinker fluid. So now we're gonna check everything for the safety test, make sure it's gonna pass. Our headlights work, our wipers and washers work, bright lights work, left turn signal, right turn signal. Let's go check the back. Brake lights, parking lights, reverse lights. We're good. So now we can put our moldings back together. Pull the two-sided tape apart, throw little plastic pieces on the ground. We'll upset OSHA because the shop seals are going to get all wrapped up in them. Or maybe the shop turtles. Not sure which. I don't have to get too aggressive pushing those on because we're going to put the screws in there. That's going to hold it on there. And now we're ready to throw them on our doors. We'll line up all the clips. There is a little bit of adjustment, so you can miss one. And if they aren't all lined up when you push it on, you gotta take the thing back off. It's kind of a pain. So you kind of line them all up there and push them in. Make sure our molding is stuck to our molding and that our molding is stuck to the door. Now we can put the front one in, line it all up, smash it on there. Now we're going to make our OEM template for our Denali name. I have an OEM template for the terrain name, but this Denali one we have to make our own. So we'll get the height right measuring off that body line. And we'll just mark where the ends of the letters go. And then we'll listen to the experts in the comments tell me that it's going to be the opposite on the other side. So my template won't work. And I'm just going to nod my head. I'm going to go use the template on the other side. And I'll make a template for the front so we can get our distance from the front of the door. Another piece on the bottom so we get the height right. Then we're going to take our other template off the front here. I'm going to take it over to the other side and transfer our measurement. But because this side is exactly the opposite, the sticky side is out. So we're just going to set it up there. We're going to use another piece of tape to mark the edge of it. And that's where our eye is going to end. And we'll take the bottom piece from the other side. We'll line it up with where the back of the eye was. Take off our little piece of blue tape here. And our template is ready to go. Turns out that Denali is spelled the same way on both sides, so I can use a template on this side. Ah, we got a D methane the front of it. They put their name everywhere. In a pile. You know what it's time for, and a lot of you have asked. But the brake job hammer and the bumper installation tool are both on back order due to supply chain issues. 
uh, and they can't give me a date when they'll be available in my Amazon store. Uh, so I'll let you know when they are. I know a great job. So I'm sure the experts are going to tell me that I'm using the wrong hammer for this, but hey, it works. Clearly it's on video. I really don't like doing tires all that much, so uh, let's give it a shot. Alright, he's on the car. So we're going to change the oil one more time because I did put about 1,500 miles on it. And we're going to give it a quick bath and it's ready for its new home. I won't make you watch washing the car. I'll let the other channels do that. So the terrain is all done. It looked like it was just a simple couple doors and you were good to go. Now when I bought this car, I was bidding against one of those people that love to buy cars and doctor them up and run them back through the auction. So that's exactly what they would have done. They would have thrown a couple doors on here, sent it back through the auction, and somebody else would have bought it thinking it was all done. Then they would have got out and found out that the B pillar was all smashed in, that the airbags were deployed, and I can be sure of this because I've bid against those same people many times. They're in Miami, in case you're wondering. But I got it. I fixed it the way it should have been done. Drove it around, made sure everything was all right. While I was driving it around, I had a customer ask me about it, and they ended up buying it. They had bought a terrain for me previously about six years ago, so I have that one back now. We need to do a little work on it because he crash tested my work. We'll take a look at it and see what it looks like after it's been out on the road for about six years in the salty winters after I repaired it. We'll see if my side is as good as the original or if it's worse or maybe even better. Now the only parts that I didn't have for this build were the tires and the brakes which actually weren't part of the accident. They were just maintenance items that needed to be done and two curtain airbags and the seat cover. Those are the only parts I had to buy for this entire job. Basically two airbags and a seat cover. I spent a thousand dollars in parts. And in case you're wondering, everything lines up. The doors close right. Probably better than the factory. So it looks like this build is done. My hitter's tears bottle is full, mission accomplished. But there's only one way to really be sure it is totally complete, and that's to play everyone's favorite game. You guessed it, what's in my console. And Methaney just tagged everything and they won't give up. I swear, there's a portal out this window that's just gonna bring this back and put it in the next console. Let's see what else is in here. Bunch of candy, AARP card. I'm just gonna leave all that in there for the next person. In case uh, they don't like Sunders or Navigation either. But that's it. There's no bolts in here. Are you as amazed as I am? It's probably because I left them all in the parts car. I still had plenty. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next build.